Coach Sincere Brackett, uh, so like you know, he got here late in the process, but I mean, big kid, you know, came from a really good program. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, I, I really like him as a person. Um, we had the opportunity to see him at the Redlands camp um, pat the past summer, and we were kind of down the road um, in the process with a lot of other players already. So a guy that kind of came available late, um, but we knew about him for a long time, and I think he brings a lot of like you've seen on most of the signing class, a lot of position versatility, a lot of speed. Um, at that camp, I watched him play middle linebacker. We moved him over to some of the edge rush drills and saw how he did in those packages as well. So to have a, the in-person contact with him and, and just you know get a chance to know him and, and hear his story a little bit um, was a major selling point to all of us, I think. When I talked about talk to him. He, he mentioned how there's so much responsibility that comes with being a middle linebacker. You've got to be a leader of the defense. What does it mean that he already understands that at such a young age? Yeah, I think it's I think it's huge, you know. Um, sometimes guys in high school are see ball, get ball guys, and then they gotta they gotta get to college and they gotta set the front and they gotta set the formation and they may have to change a call and they may have to, you know, alert everybody to down and distance and what personnel's on the field. So those guys wear the big hat a lot of times in the defense and, and along with, you know, the safeties in the back end, but but those middle linebackers, they control a lot and it, it's a it's a heavy burden on those guys. But the guys that accept it early and understand that's what they have to do to get on the field, I think that smooths the process along a little bit. You, you step into the, the DC role and you're, you know, you're so focused on a position group previously and now you kind of get that aerial of the, of the whole defense. You're through the recruiting process. Like what, what was it in your mind that you wanted to see you know, added to this defense that, that would help suit you and what you want to do on defense? Yeah, I th well, you know, first off, the, the defense, Spencer's still going to be involved. He's the head football coach. He's coached defense for a long time. Um, we're not going to walk away from a system that he's familiar with um, because he wants to not necessarily micromanage the situation, but be able to come down and, and talk with the guys and help those guys out a little bit. Um, so he's still be, he'll still be involved. It'll still be um, you know based around the system he's built. Um, some of the things that we wanted to add, he had talked about adding. Um, you know, we had previously had that conversation between him and myself about things that maybe we could tweak or things that we could bring in um, in the off season. And those are still things we're exploring. Um, just like Bush said, watching a lot of NFL film, um, some of it translates to the college game on defense, some of it doesn't. But more, more in the way, I guess, they're building those pressure packages and how can we make it more user friendly for the, for the young men playing football for us, where they can do a lot or present a lot and still do it really fast. And, and it may be a little for us, but a lot for the opposing offense. So I think just tweaking some of those pressure packages, um, getting some new ideas on third down, um, those are kind of the major things that will be, I guess, quote unquote, changing going forward. Anything else? Eric's a lot of roster changes, a lot of new phases with this entire football team. It seems like about two thirds of those are new additions on defense. And so the emphasis obviously was there based on, on your guys' actions. Where do you feel most comfortable about where this football team got better this offseason in defense? Yeah, well, I, I just feel like overall speed, you know, um, speed at just about every position on defense. And we have a lot of returning guys coming back, whether old and age or experience, which is a really, really good thing. And then I think we've brought in a lot of guys that can either compete to take those spots uh, help on special teams or get on the field in a package um, right away just because of the speed that they bring to the team. So I think that the game is ever evolving. Um, you know, it's changing positionally as well as schematically. So to be able to have some players with position versatility and also get enough speed on the field versus these spread operations was critical for us in the recruiting process. You brought some new coaches on the defensive side as well. How, how are their ideas and, and stuff with Tyler and, and bringing in Stacy, uh, how's that kind of fitting in? Yeah, those, those guys are, um, so far, they've been, they're exceptional coaches. Um, they've been great in the room. Uh, they bring a lot of ideas. And the, the funny thing is, is like, you guys watch a lot of football. It's not like it's a, a dramatically different scheme, no matter where you're at. Some people may be three down, some four down, but eventually we get to the same things. But they have some different twists on things or things that make things better. Just like Coach Collins the other day, we're talking about a pressure that's been run here for a long time. And he said a very simple thing that could have a dramatic impact 
on, on that pressure. So like those are the those are the cool things, along with some additions like Jay is talking about, but also some tweaks to the the things that we're currently doing that can make it just that much better. Just move those margins a little bit. Talk about Ahmed, uh, where he is right now, and you know the better he gets, does that allow you to do more things with him on the field? Yeah, uh, obviously, you know the the more value you bring to the program, the more um, chances you get in different packages. And it, it's all going to depend on, you know, what Ahmed feels most comfortable with. Um, you don't want to, you want to do a lot with some guys, but sometimes when you do too much with them, you take away from what they're really good at. Um, and that guy, he's really good at, at stopping the run and he's really good at rushing the passer. So what we have to find out is, can he do that from multiple positions? Is it better just to line him up and let him go? Um, but Ahmed is, I mean, his journey in football is probably halfway, maybe less, just because of where he started and the ascent that he's been on. Um, so I think his ceiling is still very high. Um, we'll see that here and we're going to see that continue on Sunday for for years down the road. So, but his journey is not not even close to being at the top yet. Whether it's Woodard, or, whether it's Woodard or Weges or, or or Andrew Simpson, I mean, how important is it for another pass rusher to step up and kind of pair with to pair with Ahmed? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, you want to not let the offense dictate to where they're going to put the protection, right? Um, and Jaden Virgin came a long ways, and then we've got you know obviously Andrew Simpson can do some <clears throat> nice things in in the in the pass rush game. Um, Tavion's here now, and you know you never know some of these other guys that we've got coming with some speed on defense. Easy's got some real speed, you know, coming in blitz packages, and I know they rushed him off the edge a lot, so we're going to be able to to see some of those things. But to be able to control both edges and and also be able to have some speed coming up the middle is huge when you're trying to um, not only rush the quarterback, but leverage the quarterback in the pocket. What do you, what do you know about Jeremiah Irby? And, uh, what do you love about this kid? What's his ceiling? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, the recruiting process is a lot shorter with the transfer guy. Uh, I had the opportunity over the Christmas break to have a lot of conversations with him. I, I love the young man just in his his attitude, his maturity, um, the way he approaches this deal. Um, obviously, he's been at you know big time football before, so it's not like a, a freshman guy coming in and doesn't really know what's going on. He's a, he's adjusted fast, he's adapted fast, um, he's got good film out there. Uh, I don't I don't exactly know what his ceiling is because I haven't ever seen him play football yet. Um, but I know just in the weight workouts and all those kind of things, he's a guy that I would expect big things from. Um, in in the attitude probably more than anything with him. Where does uh, Tavion fit in? Is, I mean, yeah, where's he fit on your defense as an older guy? Yeah, so obviously looking for looking for depth at, at both edge positions, um, and not just depth, creating competition and practice. Those edge guys, I mean, you guys all know Ahmed's a really good football player. Like, there's there's no getting around that. But do you ever want to not have somebody compete with him? No. Um, so where we're looking for guys that could not only come be depth guys and take some reps, but also compete with those. And then just like we talked about before, if he happens to be the, the next best, then you know we're going to have two defensive ends on the field you know, at one time instead of maybe having a quote unquote what we call the stud. Um, so that competition will shake itself out in the spring. We'll see how he does. Um, once again, he, he's played a lot of football. He's got film out there, but I've never seen him practice with us. I've never seen him practice against our offensive line, which I think is a tremendous group. Um, so we're going to we're going to find out what he can do pretty quick. Did you baseball yet all? Uh, a little bit. What was your reaction when you saw a person with the name Griffey and you know, maybe you maybe rolling through here? Well, I mean, I was a <clears throat> I was a baseball fan. Um, growing up in the in the '90s and in 2000s was my my baseball uh, pedigree. It's kind of drifted away a little bit. We're we're pretty busy right now, um, but that was pretty exciting. You know, obviously, you know, you see that name and you don't think there's any affiliation. Then you find out uh, who the father is, and then to have him come in here, like I was I was trying. I, I hate the photo shoot, right? I'm trying to get a photo, you know. But it was it was very exciting to have him in there. And then the the interesting thing is like, obviously we know he's got a lot of physical talent, the father, right? Ken and talking to him though, just about how he thinks about things, the mental side of the game, you understand very quickly why he's a Hall of Fame baseball player. And it's exciting to get 
one of his children in here, not because of who his dad is, but the way that he's grown up and the way he's been trained and the athletic ability that he has and to see that carry over. And now he's not Ken Griffey Jr.'s son anymore. Now he's a Boise State Bronco, right? And so he's going to get a chance to make his own path. And I think that's pretty exciting for, for everybody around. Guys been around, you know, the game for a while. We, we talked to Spencer about it, but them altering signing day dates and um, just just curious your thought on how it is now. If you'd like to see anything different, is there anything that you know you you should think should be changed or corrected? I don't know. There's there's a lot of things that are going on now that are probably not in the best interest of coaches and or prospects. Um, signing day now, having two. I don't know. It's a little it's a little wild. Should you be able? There's a lot of people that think that as soon as an offer goes out, those young men should be able to accept it and sign, and that would keep a lot of fake offers from being thrown out there. But the offer is different than it was a long time ago. So I, I don't think that. Should there be things that are changed? Yeah, probably. But I think you just have to always adjust with college football and how can you make it work for your specific program. Boise State's got an unbelievable space in the current landscape. And we will always use that to our advantage. And I think that's, instead of focusing on what should be different, we need to focus on how can we make it work best for us. But um, Last one. whether you, oh, I don't want to pressure that. Everybody good? OK, good. OK, all right. Stacy Collins, I don't know if you knew, ever had a previous interaction with him prior to him coming back here. But um, whether the answer is yes or no to that, what, what's been your take since he you know, been back here for about a month or so? No, shook his hand a couple times, did not know him. Um, every person I talked to uh, that's had contact with him, worked with him, coaches that he recruited their school, couldn't say enough great things about him. Um, so far, he's been an unbelievable addition. I mean, obviously, anytime you get somebody with, with the kind of experience that he's got, um, you know, the, he's coached multiple positions. He's been at multiple places. He's recruited a lot of great student athletes. Um, but just getting to work and him being a guy, like I, I couldn't think of a better guy to, to have here to come into this program and, and be part of it. I think, he's, I think he's a special person and a special coach. All right. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, guys.